Hello and welcome to It's a Knife News. My name is Naveed. And my name is Gunnar. Today we will be talking about the XYZ affair and how it was important to the early republic. The XYZ affair was a political event in 1797 and 1798 during the John Adams presidency involving a confrontation between the United States and France that led to an undeclared war known as the Kwasi War. This is important to the U.S. because we tried to stay neutral and this may have changed our side. The start of the XYZ affair was when the United States tried to remain neutral in the conflict between France and Britain. But in 1795, America signed Jay's Treaty with England. This decreased tension with the U.S. and Britain and eventually moved, removed the British out. But the French did not like this treaty whatsoever, so they started seizing and impressimenting the U.S. Impressment is when the French seized and captured good and people from the trade ships and took the sailors to work for them. This was damaging towards our economy and, it, and the U.S. did not like it. This is important because it was the start of the XYZ affair. President George Washington sent one diplomat, Col his name was Coltsworth. His last name is also there, but it's kind of hard to pronounce. And the French refused to talk to him. This is important because it showed the French did not like the U.S. and were unwilling to negotiate. Over time, the French seized a substantial number of U.S. ships, and John Adams, who recently became president, sent a three-member delegation to France, which consisted of Coatsworth Pickney, John Marshall, and Elbridge Gary. But because the U.S. was strongly ruled by Federalists, Gary was objected to be put in the group. Francis Dana was chosen instead, but he declined. So John Adams put Gary on the group anyway without consulting with his cabinet and, intru and introduced the idea to Congress. He gave a speech to Congress where he said they needed to fight the nation, the nation, sorry, nation's neutrality and to expand the United States Navy, but he did not want to start a war with France. The Congress accepted his commission and they were instructed to negotiate with the French, as did with Jay's treaty. They were also told not to accept loans, but to cope with the payment deals. Marshall and Pickney were Federalists, and Gary was George Washington, was like George Washington, and did not support political parties. The differences between the Federalists did not trust the French, but Gary was willing to negotiate. During 1797, there were many things going on in the French government, and many politicians against America were elected to power. The foreign minister known as Talleyrand did not care about the interests of Americans and did not see the Americans as a threat. The Americans arrived in France in October and wanted to have a meeting with Talleyrand right away, but he wanted to know the explanations for John Adams' speech and how much they were willing to negotiate with them. Talleyrand did not see them as willing as he wanted to, so he refused to talk to them. They discovered the demands of the French through an indirect channel, and the commissioners decided there would be no explanation for Talleyrand. This is important because it raised tensions between the Americans and the French. After the series of indirect meetings, the main meeting was between Pickney and the U.S. and Hotney for the French. Hotney said that France wanted a large loan and a hefty bribe of 50,000 euros, which was almost a million dollars in today's money. After Hotney told the demands to the entire commission and quickly rejected the demands, a week later they repeated the demands and threatened them with potential war. And Pickney famously said, no, 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 not six pencil. And after that, they refused to negotiate with the French and publicized what happened. The commissioners soon discovered that only unofficial channels were open to them. Over the next several months, Talleyrand sent a series of informal negotiators to meet with the influence of the commissioners, many of which were struck down, and Talleyrand made his final try in November at a dinner to change the unwillingness of the Americans to pay the bribe. Throughout time, Talleyrand tried to talk to Gary, who was open to negotiation, and stopped talking to Marshall. In March, all three commissioners met with him, but there was no progression in the negotiation despite French dropping the loan. Pickney and Marshall left France in April because they weren't allowed to talk to them. Gary wanted to leave to show unity with his commissioners, but if he left, the French said that they would declare a war and he didn't want that to happen. 
Gary remained behind, protesting the quote unquote impropriety of permitting a foreign government to choose the person who should negotiate. Gary resolutely refused to engage in, in further substantive negotiations with Talleyrand, agreeing only to stay until someone with more authority could replace him, and wrote to President Adams requesting assistance in securing the departure from Paris. Talleyrand eventually sent representatives to the Hagu to reopen <laughs> the negotiations with William Vance Murray, and Gary finally returned home in October 1798, a year after he became to France. While the American diplomats were in Europe, President Adams considered his options in the event a failure. His cabinet urged the nation's military as to be strengthened, including a 20,000-man army and an acquisition. acquisition or construction of ships for the Navy. He had no substantial word for the commissioners until March 1798, when the first dispatches revealing the French demands and negotiating tactics arrived. The commission's failed was duty. Failure was duly reported to Congress, although Adams kept secret and mistreatment. Of lack of recognition and demand for a bribe of the diplomats, seeking a, to minimize a warlike reaction. His cabinet was divided on how to react. The general tenor was one of the hus toward France, with Attorney General Charles Lee and Secretary of State Timothy Pickering arguing for declaration of war. The French position became because he sought war and t united with Federalists to demand the release of the commissioner's dispatch on March 20th. Adams turned them over with the names of some French actors replaced by the letters X, Y, Z. The use of this disguising letters led the business to immediately become known as the X, Y, Z affair. When the news reached France of the dispatches and ensuing hostile reaction, the response of the French was furious. Talleyrand was called to the directory to account his role in the affair. He denied all association with the informal negotiators and he listens to the assistance of Gary in exposing the agents whose names were been taken away, which Gary, Gary agreed to participate in. Thank you for listening, and see you next time on It's, it's a Knife News. news.